So Blackmagic Design just released the Speed Editor for DaVinci Resolve 17, and with that comes a brand new way to edit multicam video called Live Overwrite. It takes up a big chunk of the panel. <laughs> so Live Overwrite is pretty important. So I'm going to show you how to use Live Overwrite today, how to use a search dial, how to set up a, a sync bin if you've never done that before, and it happens all in the cut page. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips where I help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's something that you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss my tip next week. I also want to let you know I have time code in the description so you can jump around and find just what you're looking for. So Live Overwrite is super fun. It's unique to the new speed editor, but I'm sure you're wondering why would I want to use that instead of regular multicam editing that I already know how to use. The thing that makes it so fun is you actually paint it on as you're scrolling that search dial it's rolling on as you're doing it. And then there's another feature that you can't even do when you're doing a traditional multicam edit. You can add a dissolve as you cut, which is pretty sweet. Or there's another feature called the close up feature. You can add a close up as you cut. So you're taking your source angle, it's getting blown up while you're putting it on the timeline. Okay, so here is the new speed editor for DaVinci Resolve. In the middle section, you'll see here, there are lots of multicam buttons. Um, those are to change angles, um, decide if you want video or audio only, and then there is a special live overwrite button right there. It kind of works like a caps lock button does on a normal keyboard. Now before you can use live overwrite, you have to set up a sync bin. And Resolve 17 has three different ways to set up a sync bin. The first is by using time code, matching time code between the different camera angles. A lot of people don't have that, so I'm not even going to show it in this video. Uh, the tool you would use is like a tentacle sync is a popular one or an ambient locket box. The second way, which is probably the most popular way, is there are audio waveforms and it can sort of line up those waveforms from each camera. This is a wave, by the way. Uh, you can line up those waveforms between the cameras. So make sure you're recording sound on all the cameras whenever possible. These are some different multicam clips and uh, I'm going to show you how to set up the sync bin. So let's jump over to the cut page we are going to select all of these three different angles. We have a wide, medium, and close. And then to sync them, we're going to sync these ones in particular using waveform sync. So there's a button here called Sync Clips. as has a sort of roundabout arrow. You'll just choose this little sync audio waveform button here and push sync. And it's going to analyze the content. It's going to line them up for us. Now while this is running, I want to let you know um, it's important to make sure you have sound on channels or tracks 1 and 2. These C200s, sometimes we run these without any channel, any sound on 1 and 2. So what I do is in the clip attributes section of the media page, you can actually kind of copy the audio that's on 3 and 4 into 1 and 2. Okay, it looks like we're synced up. So if we want to preview it, you can just click the playhead anywhere you want in the clip. And then if you want to hear only one of the audio tracks, you could click solo. I know I have a good boom mic on track three, so I'll select that. For, you know, it's like, how oh, great, Keelan's here again. <laughs> um, we can see it's synced up. We have got good sound, so we're going to say save sync. So now we have these all three synced up. We know that because there's a little blue indicator in the upper left corner of each clip. So and then over here in the media page, we can quickly see there is a media sync file that it had created. And this is just the instructions for how it all ties it together. And then the third way is what if the waveforms don't work? There, You can actually mark an in point or an out point. And a lot of people think that's just for if you have like a slate that has a clacker or someone that does, you know, like a clap, something like that. You could obviously use that as marking an endpoint. But I've got another trick that is pretty much foolproof if you have a person in the scene. I actually have a set of clips here that are from a really windy shoot. We can listen right here. You know, you, even though I have sound of her talking, it is such poor quality that I know that waveform sync is not gonna work. So what you can do instead, even without having time code, you can mark an endpoint, and you don't even need a slate. So the trick I've used for over a decade is if you need to sync something up, you can, and you have a person, you can look at their mouth. And if they say something like a, a ba or a pa sound, you can see their lips kind of open up. That's actually a great point to sync something up. And you don't need someone to clap, you don't need to slate, you just need someone's mouth to open at the same point in time from different angles. So I'm gonna try to find that moment. <laughs> 
first exposed to the outdoors. I was born. Okay, so she says, I was born. So born is a good marker. And I'm going to switch to jog on the speed editor. That gives us a little more precision. So there's born, and we're going to mark an endpoint right there. With its, That's the white button there. Now we're looking at the wide shot, and I just need to find where she says born at the beginning of this one. So I'm pr using scroll to get to the beginning real quick. Okay. Switching to jog to get it in a more refined uh, sort of control. We're looking for the word born. And moved to Colorado at the age of four. Colorado. And when were you first exposed to the outdoors? I was born. There it was. I was born. Okay, that seems like the beginning of born, so I'll mark an endpoint right there, white key on the speed editor. Okay, now both of those are set up to be synced using the sync bin. So you just select the two like we did with the waveforms. You choose this little button right here. In this sync clips section, instead of choosing waveforms, you can choose endpoints. Choose that, sync, and it's we've already done all the work for it, so we can just quickly check at any moment where there's some motion to see, to double check ourselves. Um, I knew that Sentinel loved me. We're good on that, and we'll say save sync. So both of those now have the blue indicators in the upper left, and we can check back in the media page. We have the special media sync file that's tying those together. And so now you know how to use the sync bin, or at least how to set up the sync between the clips. Now we're going to get into how you throw them on the timeline and have fun painting with live overwrite. So now let's do some live overwrite. We're going to create a new timeline. We'll call this one waveform sync timeline because that's what it was. <laughs> and we're going to choose uh, four audio tracks. That's what the C200 shoots. They'll be mono. We'll say create. And we'll go in, and the first step you have to do is, um, this is our waveform sync one, you have to throw down like a base layer. So, and it's best to throw down your base layer with your best audio. And I know that just happened to be this clip that I have right here, which is like a profile angle. So I'm gonna use the speed editor. Up in the upper left is smart insert, and if you just tap it, it's gonna drop the whole clip down there. Uh, if you don't have any marks, it'll just do the whole clip. So that's down there. That's awesome. We can quickly preview with scroll and then using the search dial. Uh, if you push timeline first, that helps. Push scroll dial. Hang out with people and... So we have a clip down there. It has decent sound, but I'm going to make it better. So I'm going to go over to the edit tab real quick. And I know from looking at this, all the sound I really care about is going to be on track one. So I'm just going to solo track one and we can. And then on top of that, they ran this. It sounds much cleaner. So I don't have to deal with listening to any of the rest of that garbage. We can jump back to the cut page where we're going to do all our fun work. Okay. So we have a great base layer down on the timeline. Now we can check that uh, a section of it out if we want. I just using the search dial and we got plain stop. Yeah. So I think this exclusiveness that this group had. Um. So now that that is set up, we can uh, add more clips to it. Before I do that real quick, I'm just gonna mute so that I can scroll and we don't have to hear that sound at the same time. So by tapping sync bin, which is right up there, we have access to all of those clips and to drop them down, here's where the magic happens. Uh, right now we're on angle three, which is that close profile. I want to go to the wide angle, so I'm going to push one, holding it down, and rolling forward with the dial. It's just painting that on. And maybe I want to go straight now to angle two. You just switch over to two on the dial, on the button, <laughs> on the speed editor, and rotate that dial on out. And then to review it, you would press timeline, and you can see it in, you know, its full glory. And if we want to play sound, we could click there. And <laughs> yeah, so I think this exclusiveness that this group had. Um... So that's that's as simple as it is. And the beauty of all this too is that you can do your trim in and trim out that are on the speed editor. 
So let's say I want this to go back and forth. I can scroll to where my smart indicator goes to the end of this clip. Um, okay, now you can see that smart indicator triangle has moved over. I can say trim out, or I could use roll. Let me use trim out, and I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. So it's gonna go back and forth. And then you could also go over to the next one and say trim in and shorten that up a little bit and then go back down to the timeline and preview how that cut works, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I think this exclusiveness that this group had, um, it just bothered me because I wanted the rest. So it's really simple to just paint clips on. I'm gonna click back up here to volume so we don't have to hear all of the, the audio and dialogue that's going on in this interview. If you just hit sync bin and you click an angle that you want, I would say I want angle two, I hold it and I drag it on. So holding a button is great and all, but what does Live Overwrite do? Live Overwrite is a button rinse right, right here. You click it, it glows up and it's kind of like a caps lock. It kind of holds things there. So with Live Overwrite held, if you're in your sync bin and your source, so you can see I'm able to scroll the sync bin up there. If you just click to your new angle, you can start painting without holding that button down. Okay, maybe I wanna go over to angle two now. I click two and it's basically turned it into like a live switcher. So I'm going between one and two, one and two. And then if I wanna get out of it, you just click again and now we're out and past that. And why this live overwrite button is kind of powerful is you can do a couple things with it that you cannot do with a normal multicam sequence. And I'm gonna show you that in the next timeline. So I've got the other footage here that we synced up in the sync bin using endpoints. And I just wanted to illustrate the two other party tricks that the sync bin has. And that is to actually cut with live overwrite using a dissolve or cut with live overwrite using the close up feature. So let's just scroll into the timeline, hit timeline, move the search dial to a spot where you know you want to be doing a cut. And this time in, when you go into live overwrite, you'll hit live overwrite. And maybe we want to be putting dissolves automatically. So I hit dissolve down on there. And then in the after, you know, I've got sync bin open as well. I'm going to push angle two to go to two, which is the close up angle. So I tap that once. And as I put that down, you can see it added a dissolve right off the bat. I didn't have to do anything to it. Push angle one, and it's automatically adding, go back to there, it's automatically adding that cross dissolve. Now, this isn't gonna make a whole lot of sense in this material, because, I mean, who wants to see a cross dissolve, uh, you know, across these here? Because it just looks, it doesn't look great, but it's an option, and you can set any uh, transition here as your default and have that happen within Live Overwrite. And then the other feature is using the close up. So if we have Live Overwrite selected, we can then hit um, the close up button and then angle two. And what it's done here is it's taking our second angle, which is already our close up shot, but it's punching in further. So that's closer than the original shot was. And the way you can tell that is by going up, by selecting it here, and then you can go to this little inspector window. And it has decided to blow it up to 124%, basically 1.245 of the normal scale. And then you can even use the search dial here and the speed editor to change the position of it. The close up button on it lets you do that. If you hold down on this, it changes the Y position and you can fine tune that as well. Hey, real quick, I wanna let you know, I also have a video called 17 Ways to Use the Search Dial with the Speed Editor. It's a great introduction if you're new to the Speed Editor. I think it'll help out a lot. Now let's get on to the bonus tip. Okay, so one last bonus tip here, if you wanna do multicam editing, not live overwrite editing, um, for those that don't have the Speed Editor, you can go into the Edit page, and there's a new feature that they've added in version 17, and that will let you sync things up right in the timeline, and here's how that works. So if I select my clips and I, let's just say I'm gonna add these here to my timeline and I'll select this clip here and I'll say place on top 
and then I'll go back to the beginning of my timeline and I'll go to this clip here and I'll say place on top with that and so basically I have the three different angles that we had synced up using sync bin, but they're all in a timeline so this method is gonna say let's sync these all up right here on the timeline instead you can right click and then once you right click there's a new feature called auto align clips if you right click on them and we can say based on waveform and it's kind of doing the same thing that it was doing before with the sync bin. It's just doing it right in the edit page. It's just another way of doing the same thing. So it's just finishing analyzing right now. If it has any errors and it doesn't think it can sync it right, it'll let you know. But it looks like it, it did its job. It did what it was trying to do and it shifted those slightly. Once that's done, you can just say convert timeline to multicam clip. If you click on this sucker, then you can say right click, say convert timeline to multicam clip. And so that made a auto align multicam clip. It's no longer a timeline. It is a special multicam type clip, which you can do and edit in any way that you have done in the past. So now you're up to speed with live overwrite and multicam editing using the new speed editor for DaVinci Resolve. And if you got anything out of this video, please click the like button right now. It helps me out a ton and helps the video grow. And uh, leave any questions you have in the comments below. I would love to get to every single one of those if I can. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.